Hello everyone and welcome back to Around the World in 80 Planes and X-Plane 11. For this flight I'm going to be going from Calcutta to Kuala Lumpur and basically the only plane I have that could credibly make that flight in an hour is the SR-71 Blackbird. And this is the stock one that comes with uh, X-Plane 11 and we will see how it performs. Previously I had tried to fly around the world in this and ultimately crashed in Kathmandu. I believe I mentioned that in the video where I flew into Kathmandu again and once again crashed in at Kathmandu in uh, in the Jaguar GR1. So yeah, we'll see how this goes. It's tough to actually slow down in it. I should probably look up the key for the parachute. There is a parachute. Um, a drogue shoot. Uh, drag maybe? No. Uh, shoot. Uh, deploy uh, jettison shoot X. Okay, well, we will remember that. So I have that going for me, and I'll try and use that to slow down when we land. I'll probably be touching down a lot faster than I ought to, as you would expect. Anyway, uh, we are going to continue with the Apollo 12 audio. We are nearing the end of it, though probably we won't reach the end during this flight. And they are basically approaching their splashdown. And, well, unfortunately, I wasn't able to get through listening to it in time for the 50th anniversary commemoration. Obviously, that has passed, but we will continue listening to it anyway and see how joyous they are when they come back, <laughs> I guess. So, here we go. Roger. I don't have the complete orange. I don't have the complete orange ball in the second. I, got I don't know much about the orange ball in the sextant, Roger, but copy. we will proceed Look now. You can see how much of the moon is in that patch. And that's a little bit more than that. Uh, gotta try and take off without using the afterburner. Roger, Dick. Because the afterburner uses a lot of fuel at lower altitude. We'll see how that goes for uh, me. We suspect that scattered light, Dick. Uh, sure it is. At least this runway is straight and flat and everything. Uh, Houston 12. Go ahead. Don, I can't use this star either. Once I start moving it, there's so much scattered light that I, I lose the star completely and I can't keep track of it. Roger, that's what the test is to show. Thanks. Okay, I'll press on the next one. Come on, Blackbird. Roger. <laughs> All right, gear up. As a famous astronaut once said, press. We're roughly heading south well, here. I think that's a good one to end on. Very good. I think they were still on the TV transmission. I'm not sure. Okay. Or maybe not. Maybe not. Uh, Dick, uh, Houston, can you uh, tell us how the horizon compares now with the... Uh, so this Calcutta, of, uh, of course. ...that you did when you had a good clear horizon? I suppose there are some big buildings over there. I don't know to what extent uh, I want to sightsee with the SR-71, but I guess we'll swing by there a bit. Transmitter on the way out. Well, I think there's probably a little learning process. It seems to, like those uh, buildings are pretty far away from everything else. I think far too much is made of that air glow layer. And you can almost use what you think is a riser, which also includes the air glow layer. It's really not well, let's not go down. It's fairly definite and fairly easy to use. And I think the second set today going out was by far the better one. And I've been using that particular horizon for all of these all the way, on the way back in. All right, Roger, we copy. Thank you very much. Blackbird is looking quite beautiful today. Apollo 12, Houston, if you're worried interested, about stalling there. Uh, yeah, I don't know why these buildings are all the way over here. They the, seem uh, completely out of the you, way. You want to work that in among your busy activities? Considering the rest of the you know, buildings, right? Nowhere in the rest of that swath of buildings for Don't Calcutta ahead, are there tall uh, structures, the, but then suddenly uh, you get this cluster here. In the NFL, uh, 
Cleveland 28, New York 17. Okay, Detroit we are going 16, the wrong way Green though, Bay so. 10. Philadelphia 34, St. Louis 30. Washington 27 over Atlanta 20. Los Angeles 24 to Dallas 23. Baltimore over Chicago 24 to 21. Minnesota 52 over Pittsburgh's 14. New Orleans 43 to San Francisco 38. In the AFL, Oakland took Kansas City 27-24. Houston 32, Miami 7. New York 40, Cincinnati 7. Boston 35, Buffalo 21. And San Diego 45, Denver 24. In the news, uh, Splashdown Stories and yesterday's news conference are getting good coverage. Beats Boys Andy and Chris did a little soaring of their own yesterday. Scott Royce took the boys and Jane up for a ride yesterday. Andy said he'd rather be a soaring pilot than an astronaut. You can work that out with him later, Pete. <laughs> and Chris's reaction was, it feels good, but I still like to water ski the best. There's a uh, uh, they, they're all headline. adventurers. Boston Hospital maternity wards are feeling the impact of two severe February snowstorms. And I'll let you imagine how the story runs. <laughs> uh, the Houston weather is I will uh, also let you imagine bad. how that goes. It's uh, overcast and drizzling, not really a, a day the Chamber of Commerce would be proud of. However, in the landing area, we're reporting 1,800 scattered and a high scattered. Okay, I think we can Winds accelerate now. At 15 knots with 10 but mile you can see the afterburners the use quite a bit more feet. fuel. You've got five foot swells, and if you've remembered to pack your lava lavas, it should be a lovely day in the South Pacific. Uh, this level, it's, they're not a shoe in for acceleration. Not until we kick into like ramjet mode. Well, there's Calcutta from a distance. Apollo 12, uh, if you will set in on the high gain, pitch 4-0, yaw 2-7-0, we'll take over on the ground and switch your antennas for you. Hello, here's Apollo 12. Go ahead. Don, I guess we got to start thinking about getting these uh, state vectors uh, up to speed. We have the onboard ones for the CSM and the ground. CSM state vectors in the lab slots. Uh, do you want us to uh, put the ground vector in both slots now? Lots of rivers streaming out here. Eventually we'll get to the combined delta of the Ganges and Brahmaputra River. Rivers, right, just a second, Dick. and We're that's in Bangladesh. We are about to cross into Bangladesh okay. soon. Uh, Dick, uh, Houston, uh, the uh, vectors that you've got in there now are basically are quite the, for the country of Bangladesh is the delta. I mean, there's all sorts of little. Uh, streams uh, coming so from we'll, the Ganges uh, and Brahmaputra that are all to trying to find their way to the Indian Ocean. Okay, I got a 239 30 that we're talking about. Okay, very good. I didn't particularly appreciate your phrase much better. You could have said a little better, could you? I'm sorry about that. It's early in the morning down here. <laughs> Back inside the cockpit. Uh, Houston 12, uh, we're ready to start 
on PTC when you give us the word. Roger. Back on PTC. I'm so surprised by that. But I guess they've got one more night, I think. Uh, 12, uh, give us a few more minutes to let the rate stamp out, please. Still going fairly slow here. Uh, we'll start leveling Follow out and breaking Houston, mocks uh, let's soon. Let's go ahead and roll it on the PTC. I think yeah, we'll wait till after 30,000 feet. Roger, and I'm about to turn you over to the tender care of Paul White, so we'll see you when you get back to the LRL and have fun in the South Pacific. Okay, Doc, thank you much, and thank you for all your help. Very good, we'll see you later. Bye. Now this is Apollo Control at uh, 236 hours, 56 minutes. No one here in Mission Control is able offhand to identify that uh, brief bit of music we got from the spacecraft. Uh, Apollo 12, now 49,635 nautical miles from the Earth, and traveling at a speed of 8,412 feet per second. Uh, in Mission Control at this time, we're completing a change of shift Flight Director uh, Pete Frank has taken over from Flight Director Glenn Lunny and our Capsule Communicators Astronaut Paul White. Okay, we are in Bangladesh now. And accelerating. Apollo 12. Go 12. Good morning, Paul. Uh, listen, is anybody down there thinking about uh, Getting this uh, eclipse as far as we're concerned when the sun goes behind the earth. We've got, well, we've got this is uh, we've got some 16 millimeter black and white. Mach point nine. Okay, we'll check on it. Uh, we're getting the times on that now. We'll pass those up to you. And when we do, we'll give you the dope on the, uh, what they want to take in it. Hello, 12 Mach Houston. One. Uh, on our last LOS, uh, during your roll, we did not acquire high gain when we expected to. Facing you drag, of course. Your high gain angles are pitch 40, yaw 270. Uh, okay, we had minus 40, plus 40, your pitch. Uh, be careful about not going 40. up until we're safely beyond Mach 1.3. Oh, 12, Houston, I've got a couple things for your operations checklist. Page Foxtrot 5 8. Stand by. Okay, say which page, John? That's uh, Fox 5 8. Okay, we'll start going up again. Oh, okay, 5 8. Go ahead. Okay, uh, we pick up a check. Oh, look at all this Delta. Lots and lots like of Delta going on here. On the ground when it's complete. And now about this is not the main part down. of it. Calls out to set Delta VC. These are uh, just smaller like branches. The Delta VC plus 100 feet a second, if you would please. Okay. That's it. Thank you. That was the PAO clearing this is his Apollo throat. Control, Houston, at <laughs> Not me. 37 hours, 18 minutes uh, now into the flight. Apollo 12, uh, 
presently 47,865 nautical miles away from Earth, traveling at a speed now of 8,587 feet per second. Our entry clock in mission control shows that we're See, there's still photo scenery, and you can see the very finely parceled out land, from, I think. Uh, time of entry very into tight the fields. Atmosphere. And in the control center, uh, flight director Pete Frank, who will be on um, the console for uh, re-entry and recovery, has gone around the room uh, talking to all of uh, the members of his flight control team as to status. Right now, we're looking very good. Uh, Paul Whites is our uh, new capsule communicator. 1.72 and climbing. Discussions with the crew since his arrival uh, well, on the console. Let's keep climbing, though. We're at 237 hours, 19 minutes into the flight, and this is Apollo Control Houston. This is Apollo Control Houston at 200 and 38 hours uh, now to the flight of Apollo 12. Uh, we show Apollo 12 on its continuing trip uh, back to Earth, uh, now traveling at a speed of 8,956 feet per second. And uh, distance of 44,422 nautical miles away from Earth. We'll stand by and continue to monitor, and this is Apollo Control Houston. Okay, up ahead you can see the main uh, part of the Delta. Mach 1.8. Okay, Dick, we're looking so right we're now going at down a bit to of about two and a half feet a second. They want to get another about another half keep hour that accelerating. after which uh, they'll work up your maneuver pad for you then. Okay, uh, we're not anything to rush except to get home and uh, we'll wait any length of time you need for that uh, bed course. Okay, no. This is Apollo Control Houston at 238 hours, uh, 15 uh, minutes now to the flight of Apollo 12. Uh, you just heard uh, Paul White's, our capsule communicator and mission control, pass along uh, an advisory with regard to uh, MCC-7 uh, to Dick Gordon and Apollo 12. Presently, we're looking at a a delta v of some I guess we should just climb and then accelerate at this second, point uh, with a burn duration of about five seconds we're gonna make a the, turn uh, to the south here we've these mainly been will be going updated, uh, east uh, so far we will perhaps uh, delay the uh, passing of the maneuver pad uh, for mid-course correction seven uh, some 20 to 30 minutes uh, to allow for additional processing of data on the part of our flight dynamics officer and uh, retro officers uh, here in mission control. We presently show uh, Apollo 12 at an altitude of 43,093 nautical miles above Earth. Its velocity uh, continuing to accelerate, upping its pace somewhat now at uh, 9,113 uh, feet per second. We're six hours, six minutes away from uh, time of entry into the Earth's atmosphere. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 238 hours, 16 minutes, now under the flight of Apollo 12.
Hmm, I wonder if I can coax this it to Mach 3 or not at this rate. Hours, uh, see. Minutes, now into the flight, Will we get there 12. before I get to Mach 3? Our uh, digital displays and mission control center now show Apollo 12, 41,356 nautical miles. Well, right now our Mach number is not that high. And Let me try and accelerate more. So we'll go down. Per second. And then we'll climb. Meanwhile, uh, our entry clock is up uh, and our ignition clock for mid-course correction number seven. We show uh, MCC seven occurring two hours and 45 minutes uh, from this time and entry at uh, 5 hours and 46 minutes from this time. We'll stand by and continue to monitor, and this is Apollo Control, Houston. This is Apollo Control, Houston, at 238 hours, uh, 45 minutes, and now to the flight of Apollo 12. The Apollo 12 spacecraft presently uh, 40,500. We're still over Bangladesh at this point. Next country we'll pass over is Burma or Myanmar. The uh, flight dynamics officer and mission control center has uh, just advised uh, flight director Pete Frank that he has uh, gathered data on the latest uh, vector taken on Apollo 12 and we'll start uh, computing the maneuver pad uh, for MCC 7, mid-course correction 7, which will be uh, passed to the crew. The uh, present vector uh, prior to MCC 7 uh, shows me a triangle of minus 6.22 degrees. We're uh, two hours and 35 minutes away from uh, forecast time of ignition for mid-course correction number 7 and five hours, 37 minutes away from uh, forecast time of entry into the Earth's atmosphere. This is Apollo Control, Houston. Well, okay. Hello, Apollo Can you accelerate, Houston, please? I have some information for you Plane. on the solar corona photo. Okay, stand by a second. Okay, they just want you to take photos coming out of the shadow, and they're requesting that you use the Hasselblad with, as you indicated, the black and white film. Use the 80 millimeter lens, an f-stop of 2.8 focused at infinity. They want you to take as many photos as you can, starting at a GET of 241, 55, 20. Now this is approximately two minutes before your sunrise. To start off with, use a shutter speed of one second. As you come out of the shadow, as soon as you can see a hairline sun, change your shutter speed to 1 one twenty-fifth. Stand by one. I'll have your final setting in a minute. Well, it's pretty easy to see why somebody interested in space might get interested in photography. Okay, 12, and as I said, uh, as soon as you can see any sign of the sun at all, switch your, uh, change your shutter speed to 1 one twenty-fifth. Take photos at that setting for 5 to 10 seconds, after which, uh, as the sun comes up, then change to F16 at one five hundredth of a second. And you can just uh, take a bunch of photos of that. And for information, the sunrise time is 2.41.57.18. Over. Uh, Roger, understand. Start about GET of 241.5520 with a black and white 80 millimeter lens. And 
Okay, we are past Mach 2. So I'm still trying to coax it faster. Obviously not doing this right. At some point I had this down, but not right now. We are approaching the border with Burma. Okay, I'll, uh, you can see these coastal ranges the here. See Seem like old mountain sun, ranges. Uh, go about 10 seconds instead of 15. And uh, after the sun starts coming up, your final f-stop is 16. That's f-16 at a 500. And we are now over Burma, or Myanmar. That's affirmative, Al. Also in your flight plan, we call for a comm check at 239 hours. We're not going to run that comm check. We would, however, like you to go ahead and uh, fire up your VHF. And we'll hold off until we get indications of a good signal strength on the ground at which Mach time 2. we'll then VHF comm check. Still just 50,000 feet, but it seems better to accelerate down here, I think. Well, sounds good. I just turned it on right now. Okay, thank you. At the higher altitudes, of course, we can see a much larger chunk of land. Than our previous flights. Roger, 12. Uh, 12, okay, Mach 2.5, looking good. Go, go ahead. Okay, that's roll 300, pitch 310, yaw 0. That should give it to you at window 5. Right here, roll 300, pitch 310, yaw 0, window 5. Right. This is Apollo Control Houston at 238 hours of 59 minutes down to the flight of Apollo 12. We presently show Apollo 12 at 39,258 nautical miles. A little bit choppy suddenly. Earth. Oops, Traveling not what I wanted. Uh, uh, is that plug-in not active? Gosh, darn it. Sometimes it starts up properly, sometimes it doesn't. Paul White's... Uh, was passing along uh, camera settings uh, to Al being aboard Apollo 12 uh, for the purpose of uh, Doesn't seem to matter too acquiring much. photography of the sun as it uh, rises uh, Mach 2.7 uh, above the earth. Uh, there will be a period in the flight plan leading up to that uh, where the uh, Apollo 12 spacecraft will be passing through a period of total darkness. We're at uh, 239 hours into the flight and continuing to monitor. This is Apollo Control, Houston. Well, now we're getting close to the bit where I will eventually need to throttle back. Houston, 12. Go ahead, 12. Uh, let me give you our final storage configuration we swap back again. We've got uh, everything the way we told you. Dick. So, we've got one suit under the left-hand couch, and it has a helmet on. And the other two helmets are on top of the surveyor bag, tied down right in front of A4 and A5. Everything else is the way we gave it to you. Okay, thank you, Pete. Go ahead, 12. Uh, do you really want us to run the CMC self-check? Stand by. Hello, 12. Houston, we see no requirement for that self-check. Okay. Don't go down. I didn't want you to go down. It's temperamental sometimes. 
This is Apollo Control Houston at 239 hours, uh, 20 minutes down to the flight of Apollo 12. Apollo 12's uh, present distance uh, from the Earth, uh, 37,360 nautical miles. Its uh, present velocity, uh, 9,851 feet per second. Continuing to monitor, this is Apollo Control Houston. Well, we can see some stars out. Which, considering it's broad daylight, doesn't seem Houston. quite right, but we won't talk about it. <laughs> okay. Okay, the attitude based on the Even if we were high up that. above the atmosphere, I think the glare would prevent seeing Zero, that many stars. It's not the atmosphere that causes one, us not six, to be able to see the stars in daylight seven. after all. Yeah. Zero to one point six. Stars, the stars are thirty five Rosalog and Pete's old favorite thirty seven Nunkey. Nunkey. Uh, we favorite. haven't passed up the burn attitude yet, but you uh this will put you at the burn attitude, except you'll be 180 degrees out in roll. Okay. And your high gain angles are pitch, minus 85, yaw, 255. Okay. I wonder if the flame from the engines would really wobble so much. Apollo 12, Houston, I have a mid-course 7 pad for you when you're ready to copy. Roger, go ahead. Okay, it's mid-course 7, RCS, GNN. 249er, 85. NA, NA. 241, 21, 57. Three eight minus zero 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 two four plus all zeros plus zero 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 one zero 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 three one zero 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 N A N A zero 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 two four zero zero five zero 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 two four. Your sextant star is one zero. We're roughly headed towards uh, two, the city four, I think one, I seven, was formerly known as Rangoon, three, but Yangon now. There is no Apollo star available for a foresight check. Your GDC stars are Sirius 1-5, Rigel 1-2. The angles, 336, 262, Not a whole lot of other features I could really Fort point Dallas. out here. That's a four quad bird. The ocean is still and, uh, to our right. Just some comments to pass up to you. They're not related to the burn. Since the burn is so short, we'll make no correction for your EMS drift. It looks right now like you have 64 hours of battery time on the water. And we're going around the room now to see whether they're not to give you a go for entry. Over. Hey, you guys are all right. Stop the world. I want to get off. <laughs> what would happen if you have a no-go for our entry? I mean, really. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 239 hours, 29 minutes. Now to the flight of Apollo 12. You just heard capsule communicator uh, Paul White's. Okay, we're ready. Uh, read the pad up. Uh, we're standing by now for read back. Okay, we thought you were going to do something about that. Go. No, we're still massaging it. Go ahead and read it back. Okay. 24985 NA NA 24121 
Oh, I'll let it drift down. I mean, the difference between going down dramatically and going up dramatically is very fine at this point. You can see it's not like it looks like it's plunging, but you can see the altitude going down. That's affirmative, Al. This is Apollo Control Houston. Uh, that was Paul White's uh, getting a read back from Al Bean aboard uh, the Yankee Clipper. And as you heard, uh, we're looking uh, for a ground elapsed time of ignition for mid-course correction burn number seven at 241 hours, 21 minutes, 57.38 seconds. The uh, delta velocity uh, for that burn, uh, 2.4 feet per second, and it will be five seconds in duration. We're at uh, 239 hours, 31 minutes into the flight, and this is Apollo Control Houston. The landscape has somewhat changed around here. Hello, 12 Houston. We're going to let you come back. So I have uh, the result of meandering rivers okay, as they flow out to the sea. Say I'm doing a very good job of trying to get it to Mach 3. Six four niner. One one six seven three. Three six one niner eight. Two four four. Two two one eight. Zero zero two niner. The next four blocks are all in eight. Down to DO four zero 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 two one one zero zero one niner zero three two seven zero Burma's eight, sort of got zero, a long four. leg and will be going down that Sexton leg. Star is two, three, Though I guess two, we could niner, four, try seven. and cut over to Bangkok. Instead, the and Borsite double back is Procyon zero one six. Rangoon is Up. pretty far one, over to four, our right six. right now. I think I'll just continue Black. in this direction, and we should one, uh, hit. We should get over Lip Thailand Lip and ultimately see the Use city of Bangkok at that point. And sometimes for you here, GET of sunset. Two four zero. Yep, no, we don't need to turn three, that two, much. Zero seven. Sunrise. Two four one. Five seven. Two three. You'll cross the terminator at two four four. One four. I guess I better just zero, stick in four. here if I want to. And if you're interested, Go moveset fast. is at 244-2005. Over. Ball faster. Okay, zero, 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 one, five, one, zero, zero, zero. 
Okay, come on, Mach 2.95. Left, Come on, come on. Two point nine nine. And there we go, Mach 3, finally. And go, keep going up, keep going up. That's all Charlie, Al. Now can we make it to 80,000 feet before I have to land? That's thing two, if you will. This is Apollo Control Houston at 239 hours, uh, 39 minutes. Now to the flight of Apollo 12. Our displays uh, in Mission Control presently show Apollo 12 at uh, 35,600 in nautical mile, uh, 609 nautical miles away from Earth and traveling at a speed of 10,106 feet per second. Paul White's uh, passed along the entry pad uh, to Albine and Apollo 12. And we will uh, discern some of those numbers for you that were included in that pad uh, based on a mid-course correction uh, 7 burn. We show a uh, time of entry into the Earth's atmosphere, ground elapsed time of 2 uh, Try and keep it north of Mach minutes, 3. 18 seconds. That's got to be sort of a and dynamic uh, thing there, going on. Uh, re -entry elapsed As we time, climb. A re-entry elapsed time uh, to 05G of 29 seconds. A re-entry elapsed time uh, for begin blackout of 19 seconds. A re-entry elapsed time uh, for end blackout of uh, 3 minutes 27 seconds. A re-entry elapsed time for drogue chute deployment uh, 8 minutes 4 seconds. Apollo 12 uh, should be at a velocity of 36,116 feet per second at the time it reaches uh, 400,000 feet above the Earth. We're uh, four hours, 42 minutes away from time of entry, and this is Apollo Control Houston. Oh, Apollo 12 Houston, uh, when you take those uh, corona photos, it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to uh, turn the lights down in the cabin to try to minimize reflections off the window, Pete, over. Okay, we'll do that. And uh, the computer is yours anytime you want to use it. Okay, thank you. Okay, last little bit of Burma here as we approach the border with Thailand. Computer's yours, Dick. Roger, thank you. Roger, we got him, 12. 
This is Apollo Control Houston, uh, 240 hours, 8 minutes uh, now into the flight. Uh, you heard the call from Command Module You know, 65,000 feet Gordon, isn't that bad. The ground if they maybe, were maybe we should hang out here. It looks the, pretty the stable, right? Keyboard, uh, which uh, was being watched here in Mission Control. It reflected that Apollo 12... Okay, we are now over Thailand. ...alignment of its uh, computer platform. Uh, this being done... Still headed towards Bangkok. I don't know if I have photo scenery down at, at Bangkok, we'll see. I see a seam there, and that seems to be the stock scenery beyond it. And now traveling at a speed of 10,566 feet per second. This is Apollo Control, Houston. Delta, please. Okay. This is Apollo Control, Houston, at... Uh, 12. Go ahead, 12. We're getting a spectacular view at Eclipse. We're using the uh, sun filter from the GNN optics looking through it, and it's unbelievable. Right, I understand, Dick. Yeah, I think we'll just hover around this altitude. We're supposed to be sightseeing anyway. This is pretty darn high for that purpose. Fuel efficiency wise, it's not as good as higher up, but. It'll be good enough. We're about halfway through the flight in terms of distance, right. but of course we had, you know, slower velocities initially. Stand by, we'll check. They better hustle. Okay. We're at 240 hours, uh, 35 minutes. Uh, you hear uh, Dick Gordon. You cannot see the Earth at all. When you just shield your hand from the sun and look out right next to it where the Earth should be. It's not there at all. When you put the smoke glass up, you can see where it's cutting the, uh, the sun. Otherwise, it's completely invisible. Roger, Al. You hear Dick Gordon and Al Bean describing the uh, eclipse they're seeing. Very shortly, they will start their photography on this uh, scene. Okay, we do have some uh, uh, new photo Apollo scenery up ahead here, altitude, so uh, there should be some at Bangkok itself. Nautical miles away from Not going to be super detailed at, at this level, but 11, uh, feet per second. we will see what we can see. Apollo Control Houston at uh, 240 hours 37 minutes uh, into the flight. We're 45 minutes now away from scheduled time of ignition uh, for mid course correction number seven. A uh, small burn, a burn of uh, 2.4 feet per second in uh, velocity uh, and delta V. MCC 7 uh, will be uh, retrograde uh, in plane to steepen the entry angle somewhat. Pre-burn is uh, showing an entry angle of minus 6.22 degrees. Uh, the control center would like to bring it up in the order of minus 6.5 degrees. Continuing to monitor at uh, 240 hours, 38 minutes into the flight. Uh, this is Apollo Control, Houston. Completely eclipsed now, and what it's done is illuminated 
the entire atmosphere all the way around the Earth, even though the sun is still on what looks like the western limb of the moon of the Earth. Okay, uh, that is Bangkok. Well, as I understand, Alan, uh, we're still working uh, on getting a procedure for taking some photographs of it. It's, it's too late. We're using those for sunrise. I think they'll be exactly the same. But uh, the diameter of the Earth now looks compared to the moon. I'd say about 15 times the diameter of the sun. But it's illuminating the whole uh, atmosphere all the way around. It looks pretty. You can't see the Earth. It's black just like the uh, uh, space. Right, I understand uh, you cannot make out the Earth at all. Well, a little bit stuttery no, as it decides whether or not to actually render things on the ground. Uh, yeah, I can see some of it popping in. and Completely around the Earth, it's illuminated. Roger. There it is. I don't know what the river is. Let me see if I can find out. Apollo Control Houston, uh, giving that vivid description uh, was uh, Lunar Module Pilot Al Bean describing the, the illumination around the, the Chao Praya River. Atmosphere of the Earth. Praya, maybe Praya. Praya. Which, uh, at present, PH. Which uh, is providing an eclipse uh, over the sun. We're at 240 hours of uh, 44 minutes into the flight. Uh, we now show Apollo 12. 29,137 nautical miles away from Earth and traveling at a speed of 11,213 feet per second. Looking at the atmosphere, it has blue. We actually probably need to turn a little bit faster than this, but I don't want to lose speed. Uh, which is very peculiar. I don't understand why. It, it, it may be the difference between being over land masses and water or something. Well. Roger, Pete, understand. Is it, is it kind of like you see in the desert in the evening sometimes when you get that uh, blue and pink streaking in the sky? Uh, yeah, except, uh, uh, like I say, it's segmented for about uh, right from the sun around about a quarter of the Earth is pure blue, and then it becomes pink for about 20 degrees of arc, and then it turns back to blue again. It is best not to try and jerk the SR-71 around at this velocity. Its turning radius is sort of wide, though. That was... That was Pete Conrad adding his description of the view. We're at uh, 240 hours of 45 minutes now to the flight of Apollo 12. Of the time to be without any 70 millimeter color film, I'll tell you. We're going to try to get it on our 16 millimeter camera. Okay, uh, Al, good show. We were just thinking the same thing. This fuel gauge over here doesn't actually but work. So One of my gripes the about the, the there, model here that that light is, being is that the fuel the information there, doesn't so seem to be right at all. You can see it's not ticking down, but we have the correct information in the upper left there. You can see that it's no longer a disc there, but you just see a, a bright white line, the diameter of the sun. Roger, Pete, understand. Well.
This is Apollo Control Houston at 240 hours, uh, 54 minutes uh, now into the flight of Apollo 12. We show... Houston 12. Go ahead, 12. We're shooting these at uh, 160th at 1.4. That's where we're going to stay unless you come up with a better suggestion. Uh, Raj, we got that, Dick. 160th, 1.4 at one frame a second. They're working on it in the back room. And uh, actually, uh, according to our figures here, you should still be seeing a little piece of the sun. You don't uh, enter the full umbra until a little after 2.41 GET. Well, let's try and get You're absolutely there. correct. We still have a little bit of the sun uh, to the horizon on the western lip. Roger. But right now, the Earth is completely, the atmosphere of the Earth is completely feet. illuminated all the way around, 360. And right in the center, it's as black, it's as dark as the uh, as space behind it itself. It's really spectacular. Roger. Hey, you got any more adjectives for spectacular? I'd like to use some if you have. No, uh, we'll put somebody to work on that, too. <laughs> Ah, dry humor. Just flying over we the Gulf of Thailand here. We presently Apollo 12 here. at uh, 27,975 nautical miles uh, out from Earth. Crossing back Traveling to the peninsula speed, side. Traveling uh, speed of 11,445 feet per second. We're uh, 26 and a half minutes away from scheduled time of ignition of mid-course correction well, number we seven lost burn. 3,000 feet uh, just like that. There's a uh, small burn, uh, 2.4 uh, feet per second in delta V, uh, done with the uh, reaction control system. It's designed uh, to steepen the entry angle. These pictures through the optics, right? Negative, you to the hatch window. Oh, okay. Well, Houston, which lens do you have on the deck? I have 18 millimeter. Okay. Okay, 12 Houston, we've got uh, some words for you. Uh, set the lens to F2. Go to time on your mode select and give us a one second exposure, if you would. At, uh, hit the button, it opens the shutter, hit the button again, it closes it. Understand, we'll work on it. This is Apollo 12. One thing that's puzzling us a little bit, perhaps Fido can answer it. It looks to us like the sun is being eclipsed by the Earth. Earth's North Pole or South Pole. It's kind of hard to tell what, rather than its east or west limb. Have you got any additional dope there on that? Okay, we'll find out and see which direction it's moving. Hello, 12 Houston. For the mode select uh, in time to function properly on the camera, the shutter speed has to be set to 1 60th, even though that's not our actual shutter speed. That's where we've got it. Thank you, though, Houston. Right. This is Apollo Control Houston at 241 hours, uh, 10 minutes now to the flight of Apollo 12. We're presently uh, 12 minutes away from ignition for mid-course correction number seven. This uh, very small uh, reaction control system burn, uh, 2.4 uh, uh, feet per second well, we in delta velocity. Uh, we now show uh, there. I don't think Apollo I'm 12 at uh, 26,000 feet. 345 nautical miles away from Earth, and now traveling at a speed of 11,788 feet per second. Continuing to monitor, uh, this is Apollo Control Houston. That has got to be the most spectacular sight of the whole flight. We can see now that the sun's behind the Earth. We can see clouds, 
sort of on the dark part of the Earth. And of course, the Earth is still defined by this thin, narrow, or thin uh, blue and red segmented band. It's a little bit thicker over at the them where the sun just set than it is at the other one. But uh, it is really a fantastic sight. The clouds appear sort of pinkish gray and they're first scattered all the way around the, uh, the Earth. It'd be interesting to know exactly what part nope, of the Earth we're, we're looking up at again, but we're slowing what down. our meter is now because that yeah, part doesn't appear to have any clouds and these others appear to be sort of revolving around it. Roger, I understand that uh, you can see clouds all the way around the Earth, including uh, the dark portion of it, and your nadir right now is just about the Indian Ocean. Uh, the whole, the whole, no, uh, if you're going to go up, go dark, do 80,000 feet, come on, that's our We can see all the clouds. We haven't been able to distinguish land no, masses yet, but we might be able to in a minute when we get a little better adapted. And uh, I think the air glow is illuminating the clouds down there. Roger, Pete. Nope, it's Apollo really decelerating now. now. Maybe 75,000. Pete Conrad, uh, back down again, reiterating uh, the spectacular view. So I'll give you a time hack to ignition so you can check your DET. It'll be at eight minutes. Which this is, is still about 40 uh, seconds away. Thailand below us, the peninsula portion of it. your time hack. Well, we're going to come up on eight minutes. Uh, yeah, I blew it. I'll give you one at 7.30. <laughs> okay, I just, yeah, I'd be worried for a minute. Okay, we're discussing the important parts, such as which side of the world the sun set on. Five, four, three, two, one, mark, 7.30. Okay, we're right. It's very interesting. We can see lightning and the thunderstorms down there on the Earth. I don't know how many miles out we are, but uh, all the cloud covers that has thunderstorms in it, we can see lightning. Uh, I can see it quite clearly flashing uh, from wherever we are. Yeah, they look like sort of just like fireflies down there, blinking off and on. Yeah. Yeah, you're about 25,750 out. Yeah, we're starting to look out for these synchronous satellites now. We've been uh, looking up ahead. <laughs> okay. Trying to spot the geosync satellites. Ready to run into one up here. Yeah, it could ruin your day. <laughs> Accidentally collide with one. There weren't that many back then. Even so, it would be pretty much impossible to actually collide with one. Apollo Control Space Houston, is big. Uh, synchronous satellites are at an altitude of approximately 22,000 nautical miles. We now show Apollo 12 at an altitude of uh, 25,667 nautical miles uh, from Earth, traveling at a speed of 11,941 feet per second. Hello, 12 Houston, if those uh, lightning flashes are fairly frequent, we'd like to see if we can capture some of them on film, which would be the uh, mode you're presently in with the uh, speed set to 1 60th at F2. Remain in the time on the mode select and leave the shutter open for uh, one to two minutes. Oh, yeah, they're, they're equally, they're, they're that frequent. There's two areas down there that are quite uh, active right now. Paul, you got any idea how to hold that camera still for one to two minutes? No. Okay. We'll uh, we'll give her a go after we get this burned off. Okay. Three minutes away now from our mid-course burn. Hello, 12 Houston, on your question on uh, 
where the sun went behind the Earth, we've decided that it uh, did go behind the western limb of the Earth in the northern hemisphere and should reappear on the eastern limb still in the northern hemisphere. Roger. One minute away now. Five seconds away. Guidance and control confirms plus X. Okay, plus a tenth, plus a tenth, minus nothing. Roger, 12. That was Al Bean uh, reporting uh, residuals on uh, their mid-course correction 7 burn. Looks like a good burn. We'll stand by for numbers. Well, I don't see a name we're at 241 hours at for 23 this minutes now to the body of water we're over right now. Let's try and level out here. 12 Houston, what do you have? Up and down, burn, up and down. I hate to tell you, it's, uh, Seems like an enclosed lake. There might be an outlet somewhere. 2.4 to burn down to 100. At the end of the burn, it was 101.4. And moving fast. Oh, yeah, there's uh, a. It, it, it was uh, 102.7 at uh, burn time after it turned it on. Uh, I don't know. On the, the map, there's a lake down below the, uh, called Sumtla Lake. But I don't see it around. Roger, understand. Apollo Control Houston at 240 hours. Uh, one scenery. hours at 25 minutes. Flight dynamics uh, confirms that our entry angle now reads minus 6.47 degrees. based on the uh, residuals that were read off uh, from Apollo 12. We now show yep, Apollo 12 uh, at an is. altitude of 24,670 nautical miles from Earth, presently traveling at a speed of 12,174 feet per second. This big lake I don't see a name for, but it connects to the Songla Lake, which goes out. Basically, the area we're over right now should be that lake. We're better night adapted now, and by golly, we can see India, and we can see the Red Sea, and uh, we can see the Indian Ocean quite clearly. Uh, it's amazing how well we can see, for that matter. We can see Burma and the clouds going around the, the we can see, uh, well, we had seen Burma and, uh, and the Indian Ocean, too. We can see uh, Africa and the Gulf of Aqaba. The, the, the yeah, we can't quite see that far. <laughs> That that we Roger can't do. Feet. Oh, we're we've drifted up to eighty thousand feet while I was looking at the maps. We can also distinguish okay. large towns with our Yeah, don't naked tease. Eye. Come on, go up there. Get Just up there, get up there. Barely. And by using the binocular we can confirm that that's what we're seeing. Roger twelve. That's no, very interesting. Really you may, really doesn't uh, want to get up to eighty thousand for seeing lights. Uh, and we're close to being too slow here. Apollo Control Houston, uh, we show Apollo 12 now 24,000. A couple of rip through with thunderstorms down there that are really, really let go. From what you can see, uh, the geography there, can you tell where the thunderstorms are, Pete? Okay, I'll give you a six on this one that's really bright. Apollo 12, now 24,200 nautical miles from Earth. That's... Uh, give you a fix and say that it's about uh, uh, 
two, three hundred miles to the south west of the tip of India. There seems to be a weather system out there, and uh, it's it's got thunderstorms all the way along it. Roger, twelve. Okay, we're approaching the border with Malaysia. It's, uh, Venus is just below the Earth. We can see Venus quite clearly. Well, we can see all kinds of stars, but Venus is just below the Earth. This is, this is really a sight to behold, uh, to uh, see it at nighttime like this. Roger. That's Pete Conrad providing the running commentary from Apollo 12. We're now at uh, 241 hours, uh, 31 minutes into the flight. Hello, 12 Houston. For your information, uh, weather does not have any uh, surface reports from that region, but the satellite picture does show quite extensive cloud coverage. Well, we are now over Malaysia. Okay, I got a, unfortunately we got our Earth map dashed away. I wish I had it out. I, I got it, I'm not sure that I'm giving you the absolute exact location. The other thing is it looks like just north of India, uh, and I'd say all up through China and Russia, and, uh, if that's what we're looking at, the, the whole area up in there looks like it's completely covered with clouds. Right, I understand, Pete. Also, also right in the center of the earth now we Mach have 2 a real 2.3 only. Light shining, uh, oh, gotta keep an eye on that, that uh, as we descend uh, especially. It's, with the binocular. It's, it's really bright. Raj, understand, does it uh, appear to be coming from uh, your nadir point, which should be just off the eastern coast of India now? Yeah, looks like it's coming uh, just about out of the center of, the, of what we're looking at. I would say south of uh, Burma and, and east of India. Roger, that's just about your nadir. Well, okay, well, we're going pretty fast now. Is. No, we can't either. Uh, we're checking for possibilities. It's a steady light. Uh, and it appears in size to, to be as big as, uh, as any of the thunderstorm flash. Yes, it's as big as Venus, at least. I understand. It's hard to tell if it's exactly in the center of the Earth or not. It's pretty close to being right in the center. Uh, Maybe we might want to just, just descend. Just a little bit to our right, whatever that means. Just a little bit to the side that the sun... It's not that much distance between the border of Malaysia and right. Kuala Lumpur. Roger, I think we understand that. And looking at the air glow with the binocular is... is uh, Boy, there's another sight now that, that, that's not like being in Earth orbit whatsoever. It's, it's, it's a bright red next to the Earth, and then it's got a green band in it, and then it's got a blue band. You say uh, these color bands encircle the Earth now, Pete? Yeah, but, but uh, it's not the same all the way around. What I'm seeing is, is sunrise, really. Uh, the sun is, this is about 40 degrees from the sun. And there's a red, bright red band. And then uh, sort of a light green band that's very thin. 
Maximum indicating indicated airspeed for the SR-71 is something like 800 knots, but let's not push it. Apollo Control Houston at uh, 241 hours of 37 minutes in the That's, flight. That's, you know, besides 12, the Mach number, of course. Uh, a distance of 23,358 knots miles indicated or Mach 3.35, whichever minutes, is uh, lower. Time of entry into the Earth's atmosphere. Apollo 12 now traveling at a speed of 12,507 feet per second. Standing by and continuing to monitor. This is Apollo Control, Houston. Twelve, Houston. Can you still see that bright light uh, about in the center? Uh, we're, Al, Al, we roll so Al can take the sunrise pictures, and the sun's pretty well wiped out that. Uh, uh, view that we had now the sun started up and the earth has turned black again. Roger, understand. Uh, Paul, does it look like we're going to have an update to our entry pad or, uh, or not after that burn? Stand by, I'll check on it, Dick. Okay, we've had stock scenery up till here, but we've got some photo, photo 12, scenery up ahead. I want to get a little more tracking on you. It looks good. Some of the some of the times may change a second or two, but uh, as soon as I get a good track, we'll send it on up. Okay, not pushing. Just curious. Right. Apollo Control, Houston. Uh, that was uh, Capcom Paul White's uh, advising Dick Gordon, uh, command module pilot, that we want a little more tracking data before uh, re further refining the uh, ground elapsed times numbers at entry. We're at uh, 241 hours, 45 minutes into the flight. We show Apollo 12 at 22,412 nautical miles in altitude and coming in now at a speed of 12,758 feet per second. This is Apollo Control, Houston. Hello, uh, 12 Houston. If it's not already there, will you uh, select uh, the left VHF antenna, please? Roger, left VHF antenna. Okay, and also uh, the ground readout of suit pressure dropped to zero uh, a few minutes ago. Will you give us your onboard readout? Oh, it sure did. It reached zero also. Okay, we just wanted to confirm it. Thank you. Okay, can we see our target airport on the map yet? Yes, we can. VMKK, Kuala Lumpur, uh, sorry, Kuala Lumpur International. Uh, we should probably hang our rights here. To line up a little bit better. I understand, Al, you can see the sun now, is that right? That's the sun is. I've been watching it for about the last four or five minutes. I didn't put a clock on it. And I started that sequence you gave me when the sun started to peek around. I expected the time I got to get out of the computer was the time when it's going to be fully out. Okay, Al, good show. This is Apollo Control Houston at 242 hours, 4 minutes, now to the flight of Apollo 12. Apollo 12's distance uh, from Earth, 
presently uh, 20,202 nautical miles, traveling now at a velocity of uh, 13,400 feet per second. At uh, entry, uh, we expect that velocity to reach uh, 36,116 feet per second. In the control center, we're presently counting down both to entry into the Earth's atmosphere and landing. Time uh, from entry, uh, presently reading uh, 2 hours 17 minutes 40 seconds. From landing, 2 hours 31 minutes 26 seconds. Continuing to monitor, this is Apollo Control Houston. Whoa, that's quite an angle. Not intending to dive bomb here. Slow Apollo 12, down. Houston, I have your, uh, landing area oh, it's because we had uh, broken blow mock and then Go ahead. broke okay, above it again. The forecast hasn't changed since this morning, Pete. Uh, it's still calling for good weather. 1,800 foot scattered variable broken, 10 miles. The wind is out of the east at 15. We've got three foot waves on top of five foot swells and they're running about 40 degrees apart. The altimeter is 2988 which gives a delta H of plus 38 feet. Your landing time now looks like 2058 Zulu. Sunrise was at 1612. Zulu that is, and sunset will be at 0424. There are some widely scattered showers in the area, less than 10%. Okay, on the recovery forces, the Hornets on station. Uh, they'll have three helos airborne, or four of them. Swim one and two, with swimmers on board. Recovery one, with a swimmer and a medic and photo one. We've also got two E1s that'll be airborne. That's Airboss and Relay One. We've got two C-130s. So we're actually passing over all of Kuala Lumpur first, got the airports to the south of it. Air calls are Samoa Rescue One and Two. Over. We're going way fast. Supposed to be going less than 250 uh, knots below 10,000 feet. Right. Okay, I should just stick into the cockpit here. Apollo, Apollo Control Houston, uh, that was Capsule Communicator Paul White's uh, giving Apollo 12 a status report on the uh, primary landing area. We now show Apollo 12 uh, continuing to accelerate in toward the Earth, uh, traveling at a speed of 13,897 feet per second. Its uh, present altitude above the Earth, uh, 18,625 nautical miles. This is Apollo Control Houston. Hello, 12 Houston. Give us Omni Alpha, please. I'll probably go around. 12 Houston, Omni Alpha, please. Hello, Apollo 12 Houston requesting Omni Alpha. Apollo Control Houston, uh, we're two hours uh, now away from uh, time of entry into the Earth's atmosphere. Apollo 12. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to say I'm going to go around here. Ooh. Returning to Earth at a speed of uh, 14,162 feet per second. Its altitude uh, from Earth, 17,867 point nautical miles. 
We're at uh, 242 hours, uh, 23 minutes now into the flight of Apollo 12. This is Apollo Control, Houston. Hello, Houston, Apollo 12. Go ahead, 12. Roger, we'd like uh, to go through the logic sequence. Stand by. Interesting runway layout. There's uh, the two that are directly in front of us, but there's one off to the left there that sort of starts earlier. Okay, twelve. We're away. I like that one. That one uh, looks like a ahead. long one. Okay, we'll give you a holler as we get to. Uh, I guess it's not that much longer than the others. Oh, there's a bad patch okay, of photosynthesis uh, out there. We're down to ELS Auto, uh, Houston, and we're ready for the Six Logic 2 on up. 6 1, Logic, Mark. 6 2, Logic, Mark. Well, Houston, you go for Pyro R. Roger. Hello, Just Apollo moseying 12, on in, very casual like. Apollo 12, Houston. Apollo 12, Houston, over. Apollo 12, Houston. It's Apollo Control, Houston, uh, 242 hours, 42 minutes down to the flight of Apollo 12. Capsule uh, communicator Paul White's uh, has placed several calls to Apollo 12. Uh, yeah, of course, I'm cutting out the silences, so all those calls were like a minute the, uh, apart or something. Antennas, uh, we are receiving a, a low signal strength uh, in the uh, spacecraft's present uh, attitude. We show a velocity uh, at present of 15,195 feet per second, and Apollo 12 is now at a distance of Apollo 12 presently at an altitude or distance above Earth of uh, 15,224 nautical miles. Continuing to monitor, this is Apollo Control, Houston. Hello, Apollo 12, Houston, uh, negative downlink, request you tune for max, over. Hello, Apollo 12, Houston in the blind. Negative downlink, uh, try to raise us on any antenna you can, including VHF, over. A lot of time to have communication problems. Hello, Apollo 12, Houston, over. Okay, let's get the gear down. Apollo Control, Houston, uh, that's uh, Capsule Communicator Paul White's uh, continuing to uh, call in the blind. We now show Apollo 12 at an altitude of uh, 14,566 uh, nautical miles lights. away from Earth. And traveling now at a speed of 15,536 sort of feet per second. We'll continue to monitor, and this is Apollo Control, Houston. I hate this thing right in the middle of the Hello, windshield. 12, I suppose it's for some sort of thermal reasons or something, but it sort of makes it hard to land. Hello, 12 Houston, over. Go ahead, Houston. 
Oh, okay, we haven't been able to get a hold of you guys for a little bit. Where you been? Right here, sitting on a checklist on the Charlie, like it said, which apparently wasn't the right one. Yeah, we tried to get an Omni Alpha call to you, but didn't get it in in time, I guess. Okay. What do you need? I'll find out if they want anything different. Okay. Well, I guess that'll have to be about where we're at. Uh, well, <laughs> I can't Houston, we lost everything, including uh, down data. I can't see the runway. Minutes, Can you uh, see the runway? I can't see the runway. I guess if we saw the runway, that would be a problem, huh? Okay, thank you. At the port side, start and check out. How about that? Okay, well, I can see the Pappy lights. That's a start. This is Apollo Control Houston, uh, 242 hours, uh, 58 minutes and now into the flight. Uh, that was Lunar Module Pilot Al Bean uh, advising Paul White's and Mission Control oh, Center that uh, oh. they would very shortly be uh, aligning their computer platform. Okay, not the best landing ever. Show, uh, let's go for the parachutes. Apollo 12, the distance of 13,117 nautical miles from Earth, and its velocity increasing. Now reading 16,238. Oh, can we per actually second. take this taxiway? Uh, yeah. She made this taxiway. All right. Continuing to monitor. Uh, this is Apollo Okay, cut to breaks off taxi. Okay, we made it. We didn't uh, crash. It wasn't the prettiest landing ever, but we didn't crash. And here we are at Kuala Lumpur. I've got a lot of taxiing to do. The uh, terminal's over there. Next time I'm going to be flying to Singapore in an EV-55. And hopefully we'll get in the end of the Apollo 12 this is audio Apollo there. Control Houston at 243 hours, 10 minutes now to the flight of Apollo 12. We show Apollo 12 at a distance of 100, uh, correction, at a distance of 11,323 nautical miles from Earth. That's okay. And they'll be coming in fast. And we're down in the checklist at final stoic. Okay. Roger. Let me pause it right there as they're on final stowage. And I'm going to get this thing parked. But. To you, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this flight. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.